when I experience uh, the state of knowing, state relatively, it's unstable. Of course, it's just it, it, unstable. It's quite normal. But I noticed that in the yoga class we have during the morning, you proceed according to a certain pattern. First, we stand in knowingness, and then we go in activities very simple and towards more complex, very slow to faster. Uh, having our lover looking on the left side, the red side, and after, it's much more complex after. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that a kind of rule that I can apply to different situation? Always, when I'm not in the knowing, if I have the opportunity to do nothing, I just do nothing. And then what I feel that I got my stand in the knowing, proceed to activities always from the simpler and growing slowly to the more complex. Do you think it's a way to proceed? Yes, yes. But just before, let's just rewind a little bit. When you say that the, the knowing is not stable, you're sometimes in it and you're sometimes not. Well, when I am in the knowing, it is stable. <laughs> yes, if but the, if an activity, if the sound of the music just suddenly pop up, uh, then whoop, I'm away. <laughs> but what what do you know of the sound of the music other than knowing? That does the sound of the music, or, or the sound of the PA system shorting or whatever it did, does that does it interrupt knowing or disturb it? Um, yeah, in fact, what happened, I was very close to the music and after the big sound, my body was so moved that uh, I was unable to pay much more attention to the music. It was my body who was saying, oh, look at me, you have to take care of me for a few times, for a few moments now. <laughs> and then after a while, I went back slowly to the music. It happened by itself. Okay. You, you know, an image just came to mind while you were saying that. You know when, when you're having a, a, a scan in, 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 in hospital, and the, and the scan is this, this uh, chart, a, a graph, and there's a little, it, it's tracking your heartbeat, or whatever, and there's a little green line, it goes like this, and then it goes like this, and it goes like this. And it goes, yes, you know the green line that goes at the end. Now, Think of experience like that. Experience is sometimes going like this and suddenly it goes like this and then it comes down. Okay, now the green line is knowing. Yeah? Wherever it goes, if it's a terrific loud bang, the, the green line goes up here, but it's still the green line. The green line is the knowing that, that runs through all experience. The pleasant ones, the unpleasant ones. So, stay with the knowing. Know only that knowing. That, and that knowing is, when I say stay with it, it suggests that you are something other than the knowing and that you have the possibility either of staying with it or not staying with it. That, that is a, um, a limitation of language. It would be more accurate to, to say, just be that knowingly. You are that anyway. You, you are that knowing. You are the green line, that the, the seam that runs through all experience. It's not a temporary state, it's not something that we sometimes are and sometimes aren't. So just f tune yourself into that frequency. So uh, having done that, when you're, when you're sitting quietly, then start adding thinking, sensing and perceiving, slowly. So the, when you're just sitting meditating, abiding in your true nature, the green line is just going like this. It's just one solid, steady green line, no disturbance. But then, when you start moving, the, the green line starts doing this. The graph starts going like this, okay? And then every now and then it, it goes like that. Yeah, Just 
be the green line, be pure knowing, wherever experience goes, you go with it. Yeah, wherever it goes, you just go with it. And then in order to become skilled at remaining as the green line, the light of pure knowing, you can then begin to add complexity and diversity. And also you can make life a little bit more, simulate real life conditions. You know, first the left heel, then the next heel, then both of them. And, so, and, and then take that out into life and see that when you're sitting quietly on, on a park bench, the green line is like this, then you start walking, the green line starts going like this. Then when someone comes up to you and abuses you, the green line goes like this, but, but it doesn't matter, you just stay the green, you deal with the situation, stay the green line, and etc. You just carry on, you, you, you stay tuned to pure knowing. But, but yes, in terms of the, the yoga meditations that we do, one of the, one of the patterns, that, that there are different patterns, but, but one of them would be to slowly build up complexity and intensity and see that nothing really changes. Still the green line. You're still this seam of pure knowing that goes with experience wherever it goes. And that green line, that light of pure knowing is never disturbed by any appearance. It's only a thought and feeling made self that separates itself out from the whole and looks back and says, I don't like that particular part of experience. But the knowing is never saying that, because in order to say, I don't want what is happening, or I want what is not happening, we first have to separate ourselves from experience. That separate one is imaginary, the one that separates itself. It only, it's only a separate one from its own illusory imagination. It is that one that looks back and says, I don't want what is present, I want what is not present. And because, because it is always arguing with the now, that one creates time which gives it somewhere to look around for an alternative. <laughs> But yes, going back to the, the yoga meditation contemplations that we do, yes, w one way would be to build up complexity and diversity and, and intensity. But, but with, the, with the purpose only of seeing, not even making the knowing undisturbable, but rather seeing that its nature is to be imperturbable. Then, then take, take that out into life. So from that one's point of view, there's no, there's no beginning or end to, to everything, because it is only experiencing itself. The knowing is only experiencing knowing, and the knowing is not coming to an end. When breakfast ends, or meditation ends, or the retreat ends, or our flight ends, or, the knowing doesn't come to an end, it doesn't suddenly start. It's thought that divides this knowing up into objects and duration. And, but from the point of view of that knowing, it is just eternally present in its own experience of itself. And it is taking the shape of the totality of experience. Thank you.